He appeared on this platform some months ago to justify his performance as the Minister of Information. Today, he's here to talk about his new ministry, which he says he's super excited to lead. Just how long would this excitement last? What are his expectations? Can he do better than his predecessor? My guest for tonight is Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, Minister for Inner City and Zongo Development, and you are watching The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Dawa Industrial City, Murphy Homes, uh, Paul's Fitness Chain, and Alpha White Park Academy. My name is Nana Akusia Kunidu Asante Samuels. Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, uh, Minister for Inner City and Zongo Development, is here. Welcome to the Heart Read again. Thank you for having me a second time. Yes. The first time you were here it was, uh, you know, under a different circumstance. Now, let, let's just move on. You were reassigned from the Information Ministry to the, you know, take over from the ranks of Ministry for the Zungo University and Development. Many saw it, including myself, saw it as a demotion, but you saw it as a higher calling. But some insist that, you know, this reasoning of yours is just being comforting yourself could this be like are you just comforting yourself and you know calling it a higher calling no not at all quite frankly um first of all i have been if you want a close associate of the president as you know for 10 years and for the 10 years that we've been if you want struggling you know for the presidency for power We've always had two things in our minds. You and the president, you mean? Yes. I mean, but of course, his vision, right. which the rest of us who have followed him all this while locked into. His vision is anchored on two pillars. One, social inclusion. And two, creating a society of opportunity for all. These are, for everything that he does, these are the things that are uppermost on his mind. And so, if you look at all of the 36 ministers, the ministry, for me, that best answers these two pillars, creating a society of opportunity for all and creating social inclusion in our nation is the minister for or a ministry of inner cities and Zongo development. So for me to be appointed to that position, okay, is indeed, in my words, a higher calling. Higher calling in the sense that it is the only ministry, as I said, that answers directly to the president's vision of creating social inclusion and social opportunity for all. So when I say that it's a higher calling, it's, it's not just talk. I, I mean it deep in my heart, and I'm excited. How, really? Seriously, how, how did you feel when the communique came out to Minister for Inner City and Zango Development? Well, the, the president doesn't just, um, if you want, make announcements about his ministers like that. He calls people to, to have a chat with you. So days before, he had invited me and said, um, I'm going to do a little movement. So you pick signals, you know, the not, 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 of you not, moving. Yeah, uh, not signals. I mean, this he one is you. direct talk to me. Right. Yeah, yeah, that um, <clears throat> he would do a small change, okay, in the government and that he wants me to move from information to inner cities. Um, there was another person there, the Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, Mr. Asenso Boachi, when he said it. So I have a witness. I was excited. I was excited. But and I you told have said, I said, oh, Mr. President, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, excited, but yes. I think I'll, I'll do better at A or B ministry. I mean, couldn't you have just said that? No. I like this, as I said. And, but, and, and that's very sincere. And for people who have observed me these past two weeks that I have been minister for inner cities, they feel that, oh, okay, we understand why indeed he says it, he was excited was about load, because Was the workload so much for you? So is it lighter? Like, okay, I'm going to take a back seat. I'm going to, you know, relax and work. Um, yes and no. Quite frankly, yes and no. Yes, because yes, indeed. I have always said that apart from the minister for finance, the most difficult ministry is the Ministry of Information. In other words, the two ministers who have the toughest jobs in government are the ministers of finance and the minister 
of information. Mm. So without a doubt, the scope of the Ministry of Information is bigger, is larger, is more challenging, it has more headaches, all of that, than the Ministry of Inner Cities and Zongo Development. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And I've explained that in our first encounter when I was Minister for Information. That is because as Minister for Information, you are supposed to learn every other minister's mm. brief, okay? And constantly be on top of what every other minister is doing. Whilst as Minister for Inner City, Energy, Lands, everything else, you are just confined to your own space and doing things that are, if you want, um, restricted aren't you, to your area. Mustafa, frankly, aren't you bigger and larger than the, the you know, this ministry given to you? No, nah, I am not. Listen, let me go back to explaining what the president all these 10 years has always meant by creating a society of inclusion and a society of opportunity. He has said that for our country to develop, okay, we need to create let me, let me re-echo his word. Um, a society of opportunity, meaning that people of all strata of society should be assisted and pulled into the mainstream of the economy. So that if a child is born in, say, Abwabo or Asawasi in Kumasi, that child should have the same capacity for developing his or her talent as somebody who is born in, if you want, East Legon in Accra. Are you following me? Now, that job being given to me, which is what I'm doing now, Minister for Inner Cities, and I'm sure you know what the definition of inner cities are. Mm -hmm. These are areas in various cities across our country where there are no social amenities, where poverty so levels are high. Say, yes, slums, basically, right. yes. Poverty levels are very high, educational levels are very low. And now you are giving the opportunity to try and bring these people up, improve their social standing in life, give them opportunities of life. That for me is a huge challenge. Yeah. And if we were able to do that, if at the end of, even from now till 2020, if I were to come back with a score sheet that says that, you know, for example, Zongo communities alone are 1,080 Zongo communities in our country. And all of them are lacking in these social amenities and so on and so forth. And so for you to be given the opportunity to try and pull these societies into the mainstream, in my view, is big. So but, it's not possible for me to be bigger than this type but, of assignment. But Abdul, are you a member of cabinet? No, you're not. All 36 ministers attend cabinet. You know, what it is is that since 1992, mm -hmm. all ministers attend cabinet. But you see, there's a constitutional provision. Of 19. Yes, that says that the president should name 19 people and say that yeah, cabinet, cabinet ministers. ministers. But quite frankly, since 1992, it's only been in theory mm. because all ministers attend cabinet. For example, the 19 cabinet ministers that the president put out in the public space doesn't even include minister for local government, doesn't include minister for communication. All of, but we, we all sit in cabinet. Mm. We, I, I wasn't even included as minister for information in the 19. Mm. But I was in... I was sitting in cabinet. I was sitting there with the Minister for Inner Cities and Zongo Development, Boniface Abu Bakari Sadiq. So right. all 36 ministers attend cabinet. But in theory, the president names just 19 people. But that's theoretical. But, but uh, you, so you don't speak for the president anymore? You're not, not at all. You're not a spokesperson anymore? No, because the Minister for Information is the spokesperson for government. And president as head of government, therefore you speak for him. So... That is also relinquished. Um, are you missing your job, your old job, I would say? Are you missing it? No, not at all. I mean, as I said, it's a job that I've done for 11 years. Um, I yes, remember... you mentioned <laughs> you wanted to, to move on. Yes, I you remember, remember you that. Yeah. when I was first appointed, yeah. uh, many people uh, were, were, were interpreted it to mean that I said I didn't like the job of Minister mm -hmm. for Information. I didn't say that I didn't like it. What I said at that time was that as somebody who had done that job for 10 years, I naturally was expecting that the president would give me another challenge. That's mm. the word I used. 
but many people misinterpreted it yeah. uh -huh, to mean that I said I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. So really, this is an opportunity. This is the, I have gotten now an opportunity of a different challenge from what I have been doing for 11 years. So quite frankly, I'm excited. So uh, how are you settling into your new role? Well, um, I'm settling in very well. Um, I'm sure in the past few days, um, you, you've seen me all over the place, as they say. Um, I'm, 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 I'm in the dailies almost every day. I'm on television. Why? Because um, the former minister, Honorable Alhaji Boniface Abubakar, quite frankly, in the one and a half years, has done tremendous work. You know, because it's, it's a ministry that he had to set up from the scratch. And he set it up, he's put all the structures in place, he's gone ahead to start all the interventions in, our, in various communities, inner city and Zongo communities across the country. So my duty is to ensure that where he's gotten to, for most of the projects that he started, they are just like 50, 60, 70, up to 85% complete. Mm -hmm. So my duty is to push these projects, get them complete, and also to open new frontiers of development according to my own um, understanding as anchored on the president's vision. So because of that, these past few days, I've been in various inner city communities. I've been to Choco, Kolegono, um, Medina, mm. all but, of but, those but things. But just... could, could he have done better? Do you think, you know, Abu Bakar, well, Honorable uh, Boniface could have done better? No, he's done what, in my view, anybody would have done. I mean, he's just done excellently. I mean, according to um, his capacity as a human and, and according to the, um, the resources that have been available to him. Because, um, for example, these astro thefts that have been out and about right. and, and, and inspected, many of them would be commissioned end of October, latest um, middle of November. And for me, that is good work to have set up a new ministry and started these so, matters. So you are suggesting that the reassignment, uh, you know, of, of the Honorable Minister Boniface might not be as a result of, you know, him not meeting expectations of the president, but, uh, you know, he's just moving on to a new portfolio at the, at the flag staff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, these um, shuffles in, in the, and shuffles and reshuffles and assignments and reassignments in governments, I equate them to um, the way that a coach manages a team, okay? Sometimes a coach changes a player and brings in another for strategic reasons only, not because the player is underperforming. For example, you have five minutes to the end of a match and the coach decided that I'm going to throw everything into attack. So he pulls down some defend he pulls out some defenders and brings in attackers. It doesn't mean that the defenders weren't performing. It's just that he needs attackers at this time. So it is the same kind of mentality. Yeah, but sometimes if they don't perform, they have to be pulled out. Some of the times, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said that some of the time, but I said that it's not all of the time that these things are based on, on anybody's performance. Sometimes they're just based on the president's own so, understanding of how so, the governance system right. should so, be. So you believe we are signing him to the office of the vice president was, was fair to him? Was it fair to him? Because this is the first time we've seen some, something like this happening. Well, as for that one, I don't have the capacity to speak to, to that matter. I don't know about fairness and unfairness because governance is not about fairness and unfairness. It's about deploying the right human resource in the right places in order to meet the president's vision. why not the office of the president? Why the office of the vice president? The office of the vice president, you know, this president was just being, was being truthful and direct because this is where he's going. Yes, he could have also said office of the president and then he comes there and then he assigns him to the office of the, because the office of the vice president is under it's inside the office of the yeah. president. The entire Jubilee House yeah. is called the office of the president. Mm -hmm. So even the operatives in the office of the vice president, including the vice president himself, work in the office of the president. Are you following me? That's all. So, But the president thought that on this occasion, he should be specific which office specifically he's going to. That's all. It's just a matter of, if you want, choice of words.
So, so if you were reassigned to the office of the vice president as a minister of state, would, would you have, you know, accepted the portfolio? Oh yes, I would accept anything that the president believes I should take in order to help, if you want, realize his vision. Mm. Why not? I would. Now, the problem of the inner city and Zongwe communities are far from new. They are complex, interrelated, and then deep-seated. But some people, especially the dwellers in these communities, seem to expect a quick fix, uh, you know, to these problems. Now that there is a, you know, the Zongo Development Ministry and the Zongo Fund, what do you see happening? Or is that what you see happening? Would there be a quick fix as, you know, they, they, they want it? There are some of the problems that can be resolved by quick fixes. Right. And there are some that cannot. In other words, for all of the challenges that face inner city and Zongo people, there are some that are short term, medium term, and long term. Mm -hmm. In other words, with the short term challenges, you can fi do quick fixes to them. For example, um, drainage, the drainage problems that are in most of these communities, um, you can tackle them, okay, and get them um, proper drainage systems. You can, you can fix the lightning problems. Um, as in the street lights in their places, you know, you can do the sanitation challenges, etc., etc. But the long term challenge of human resource development in these inner city areas is something that has to take a lot of planning. Okay, so because quite frankly, the reason that they are socially excluded, in my view, the most of it is down to a lack of proper education. Mm. The majority of the inhabitants... You mentioned a thousand over communities. So, so how are you going to go to... I mean, let me put it this way. Are you going to go to each community to actually ask them, what do you need? What do you need? I mean, how are you going to do yeah, that? Yeah, we, we, we have actually commissioned, actually, um, to give credit to my predecessor, just before I came in, he had almost concluded um, an agreement with... Um, a consultant who was going to go around all of these inner city and Zongo communities and do um, an assessment of where they are, the social amenities, the demographics, um, the boundaries of these inner cities and Zongo communities, all of that. It's a very huge project. Um, I met with the, with the consultant. I have concluded and, I mean, given it my, my blessing. Mm. So once we get that baseline, survey okay it will tell us where all these communities are and what are the unique challenges and situation of every community and then um hopefully when we are answering to the needs of the communities we know that we are an answering to them based on hard evidence and hard data but, but how do you again also hope to manage expectations of the people <sighs> that's a difficult one quite frankly um because once you have a ministry dedicated for them for the matter and let me take advantage of this question to say that it is my belief and i have said so in my interaction with this inner city and zongo people that i believe that this ministry has come to stay and very soon it will be such an established ministry that nobody will see any minister being assigned there as a demotion anymore you remember it was president kufo who started the Ministry of Women and Children Affairs. Mm. It, it didn't exist from our independence until then. And perhaps people, the same way people were thinking, oh, women and children are necessary, or later when another president came to change. Now it's been solidified into Ministry of Gender and Social Protection. And so in my view, it will be difficult in the future for any president or government to want to say that um, the agenda of social inclusion and social opportunity for people in inner cities and Zongo communities should be scrapped. It will be very difficult. So it will be solidified. And to the extent that it will be solidified, we will continue to push um, for, if you want, the development of all of these over 1,000 communities. Um, and it won't be a one-year project or a two-year project or even a four-year project. I, it's a long-term development agenda that feeds into the president's vision of a Ghana beyond aid. And you remember, um, we have said that this, we are envisaging that in 20 years, 
to 30 years maximum, which is the period that our our Singaporean and Malaysian friends who we always quoting used, you know, to get where they are. So if we are to have that long-term development agenda, it will mean that governments will have to stay consistent with this vision of social inclusion so that in the next 20, 30 years, we can have all of these uh, communities equalized. We'll be right back. When you dream are you searching for something new in education for your child? Look no further. Alpha White Park Academy is here. Imagine an institution with a mission to facilitate the holistic development of every child enrolled. Imagine a school that provides excellent teaching, grounded in godly character, without any form of discrimination. Imagine an academy with a well-equipped computer lab and a library stocked with relevant books. Your imaginations are within reach with Alpha White Park Academy. At Alpha White Park Academy, a multi-skilled and multi-zone approach is incorporated into our scheme for your child and infant school. We combine Ghana Education Service and other globally relevant curricula for your child in primary and junior high levels to have the best of educational experience. Our staff are highly qualified and well motivated to care for your child's every need. Security is provided to ensure safety of your child. Locate Alpha White Park Academy at number AE 401-10. Aquile Kaswa, behind the Living God and close to the Credit Union Training Center. Digital address code is CX0443030. Call us on 0502-261-944 or 0544-188045. Rush now to Alpha White Pack Academy and enroll your child. Alpha White Pack Academy, education makes. When you dream, dream big. Welcome back to The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, Dawa Industrial City, Pulse Fitness Gym, and Alpha White Park Academy. Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, Minister for Inner City and Zongo Development, is still here. Sir, you disclosed in an interview on Joy FM uh, that you come to the new ministry with a new set of priorities and vision. Although you've admitted that basically you, you are going to improve on what your predecessor did, now how might you or your approach be different from what he did? Because well, you, you just said he, the parameters are right, he, he set everything right, and then you're just going to continue some of the projects he did. Yeah. Um, the, the different vision, or let me call it the additional vision that I have, is that I have said that I want to prioritize education in these communities. Because quite frankly, um, I think that if we provide street lights, we, we, we do the alleyways, the drainages, and we provide astroturfs and recreational centers in these communities, and so on. And yet, the human resource in these communities is not developed. We will not be able to eradicate the poverty and the ignorance and the disease that, that permeates or pervades these communities. So to answer to that one, it has to be education, education, education. And so that is why I said when I visited the Medina Astro Turf, that moving forward, I'm going to um, attach libraries, mm. small study centers to these recreational centers, so that when children or school children or young people go to these recreational centers. They just don't go and play, but they so play and learn. prioritize education over all others. Yes, because that is the president's vision. The president believes that we can only become a Ghana beyond aid where we have an, a totally educated population. When everybody in this country has at least a senior high school certificate, mm -hmm. that's the president's vision. So it is important that every minister but, but Mustafa, is works it the to Arabic that vision. education, or is the formal education? Which I mean, we're talking about education in the Zongo community. Are, are, we, are we looking at just that Arabic bit? In the Zongo communities, it has to be a combination of both. A combination of both because, for me, spirituality is important. It is important to the extent that um, it is ethics grounded on spirituality that allows an accountant to say that I shall not embezzle company funds. Mm -hmm. 
for example, if you are not ethical, if you are very brilliant and, and so on, and you are the most brilliant accountant, you will use the, your brilliance to steal people's money because you don't have ethics, you don't have spirituality, you don't believe that you have a higher accountability mm -hmm. and, and, and so on and so forth. So for me, it's okay for us to balance the spiritual and the secular. So my vision and many, many of the Macaranta schools already are, are running a dual system of uh, both Arabic and Islamic education and secular education. For example, I have a PhD in religious studies in Islam, but I have worked as editor in various newspapers. I have worked as, as a strategy planning manager in various, um, if you want, um, advertising companies and marketing companies and so on. With the same certificate in religion, my first degree is in religion, master's in religion, PhD, religion. Okay, but I guess that if I came to this company, your company to seek for employment as perhaps your your media liaison officer, you will offer me the job even though I don't have a certificate in journalism. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that a university education is universal education. So I don't mind people going to Makaranta to learn Quran and Hadith, but if they learn it also with the secular dimensions that allows them to go to Legon and do Arabic in Legon or Swahili or Spanish mm. and they come out, they would still be employable. So that's the kind of vision that I have for I marrying see. the Makaranta school system and the secular. Right, world. but you have also stated that the disbursement of the Zongo Development Fund will start next month. What assurances can you give that this is actually going to happen? Because your predecessor made a similar promise that these were going to start, so they promised that the funds were going to be given to the people in July last year. But this obviously didn't happen. Well, I, we didn't actually even say disbursement. I, I'm not sure disbursement what will start in se September. I said that the board, the managers of the fund, would begin actual work by the end of September. Because as we speak, like I said, um, I just came to, it's just last week that I concluded on the office accommodation for them, where they would live. We haven't even actually even paid, paid for it. So if we pay for the accommodation, we would have to furnish it, get them, um, the personnel, because apart from the president appointed... You were minister for information. You yes. told me the last time that every ministry, you have to go through everything before, you know, taking it to the president. So I'm sure you had oversight into this. So you telling me that this is your second week or third week in office, uh, does that really matter? Oh, it does matter. No, the, the job of a minister for information is not to be a supervisor of other ministers. What you do is simply... Um, taking information from the other ministers. Exactly. So I'm and, saying and, you and, knew about the ins and outs of the new ministry, the Zongo ministry. Yes, I knew that the right. Zongo Development Fund, um, the law had been passed. I knew that the board had been appointed. I knew that the managers, uh, the chief executive and his two deputies had been appointed. That one I knew. And I also knew that they really didn't have um, an office accommodation yet to start real real work. All but, of but, that but I knew. I'm so sure that's why I'm are, saying are that. Are all these appointees uh, yeah. Muslims? Um, no, not not all of them. There's Dr. Frimpong, Frimpong uh, who, who is in there, who is, who is not um, a Muslim. Um, what does he do there? I, I, I think he's the executive secretary, but the chief executive and the two deputies Yes, they are Muslim. But but in the Muslim community, they have a lot of Christians and other you know people there. So why can't it be a mix? Yeah, the board the board has has. Um, if you look at the Zongo Development Fund, it provides for even a representative of the Christian clergy mm. and all of that. They are all on the board. But again, uh, you you mentioned just now that you are not starting with a disbursement immediately. No. It's just a board sitting down. Yeah. So once they start work. Then they would now what prioritize. Taking, right, but what is taking the time? You, why can't there be the disbursement? Don't you have the money? The, the fifty million is still. You, you there. remember I told you that the data. I told you that we just commissioned work for the hard data community by community to be giving us. Yes. 
the demographics, educational qualifications of the people, all of those. You would need that hard data in order to be able no, but to if, use if the your money to answer. did a good job, yes. you, you can just speak the data because it's there already and then you can just start what you're supposed to do. Oh, it doesn't happen that way. It's not like that. But that's what I told you. I said the data is not there. It's, it's now that it's being done. So if the data gets so why, done... So why didn't he do the data? I mean, what, it wasn't important to him? <laughs> You're asking me questions that somebody else is supposed to have answered. I guess that, um, like because I answered... You need data to work. You yes, need, you, right. do, uh -huh. you do, you do, you do, you do. But you see, he started, as I said, a ministry that was basically non-existent. He, there were, I mean, people were all generally impatient for development. Mm. And so he spent the better part of the one year answering to some of the immediate concerns. I mean, concerns that you don't really need data to answer. For example, the drainage problems in the Asawasi area with the Pelele River, they call it, the drainage problems in Medina Zongo, you know, the lack of recreational facilities in our inner cities and Zongo community. These are things that are known. And so he spent the better part of this one year. Many communities too, their classrooms have been dilapidated. Mm. All of those things I he's see, been but, doing. But so I'm, he's I'm done curious tremendous. again, moving on to, or oh, still talking about the disbursement, what criteria will be used to, to, you know, to, to give the monies out? Well, that's what I said. That's why I said to you that if the, if the managers of the fund sit and then the board, mm. when we provide them with the data, they would look at it and then they will determine their own modalities. Of course, answerable according to the Zongo Development Fund law to the minister. And, and then what measures have been put in place to ensure that equity, number one, and fair distribution of the, uh, you know, the fund across board? Well, there will be equity and fairness without a doubt um, because the law itself, the Zongo Development Fund law, uh -huh. um, provides um, for that. And so they, they don't, they, it's not as if they have a choice. They don't have a choice. Once the needs um, assessment is given to them and people apply, and then there is evidence that they, they really do require the money to answer those problems, they will disperse it according to law. Let's look at job creation. What innovations and policies gives you hope that your ministry can significantly make a dent on the high rate of uh, unemployment in inner cities and jungle communities? Well, you know, the, the, the president already has a job creation agenda. Mm -hmm. Indeed, our manifesto 2016 was titled Agenda for Jobs. And so that is why you have all these uh, NABCO models uh, uh, strengthening and improving YEA, even in the inner city and especially Zongo communities. Um, so far, about 30,000 Arabic teachers have been put on, on, on payroll and are being paid under the YEA model and etc. etc. All of that gives employment to people in Zongo community. Beyond that, the fund envisages a situation where uh, assistance will be given to people with entrepreneurial skills. Um, you know, some of it will also be used to train people um, to hone their skills um, in arts, in culture, and, and, and all of those things. So when, when all that is done and people are giving um, some amounts of money to start their own businesses and etc., etc., um, I believe that to a very great extent it would empower people economically in these communities. Inadequate staff, inadequate office space, inadequate funding from government sources uh, to support the service delivery are cited in the 2018 medium term expenditure framework document of the ministry, uh, you know, as some of the challenges confronted it. Now, how might this again affect your work output and uh, how do you hope to address these challenges? We are um, under the circumstances. Um, trying very hard to to get people to to work if you want double assignments you know as opposed to already established ministries where every department is fully fleshed out 
and you have adequate personnel for every ministry and so on. In our place, since I came, I realized that, okay, some, some of the officers are having to double up um, in two portfolios in one. You know, as you said, because um, of the lack of office space and also um, the process of seeking financial clearance to be able to recruit people and so on. But in my view, they've done marvelous so far um, with what they've been able to do. Um, there are a few changes that I envisage that I will do in the next few weeks um, in consultation with, with the former minister. Um, when we do that, we would consolidate even better and, and create sp some space for more critical staff to be recruited to, to forward the agenda of the ministry. With the degree of importance given to the Zongwe in city, uh, you know, by government, questions inevitably arise about the adequacy of ministerial cooperation. What is the level of cooperation with other ministries to create synergies in your programs? Oh, yeah. The, the ministry of, first of all, there is a setting, first of all, the entire cabinet, all 36 ministers, belong to five different cabinet committees. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, legal and governance, there's social services, there's infrastructure, um, there's security, and then there is economics, economic and finance committees. So if you see, so for ministries that are under the social services, um, they inevitably all provide social service for the state and mm -hmm. so be, uh, for the nation. And so because of that, there, there has to be cooperation. And if, so even beyond the committee level, you will find that these are ministers that the president always insists we have to be talking to um, one another. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, for example, when I went to Chebi Zongo um, to inspect the AstroTurf, and um, also next week we are going there, they, they also have uh, uh, asked for a borehole. And so next week the ministry is going to do a borehole for them. I went with the Minister for Works and Housing, are you following me, who also um, has a responsibility for some of the things that we are doing in these areas. So that cooperation exists strongly. And he told the people of Chebi Zongo, Mustafa Abdul Hamid is my very good friend. We talk every day and so on. So most many of the housing schemes uh, that we, we have for these communities and so on, we are talking with the Minister for Works and Housing. Under Ministry of Education, I'm constantly talking to my brother, Dr. Prempe, you know, on... Uh, how to get some of the Makaranta schools mm. onto the Islamic education unit and how to put secular school teachers there and et cetera, et cetera. So definitely there is no way any one minister can operate in isolation. You would certainly have to talk to other people. But but the ministry cannot also do it alone in tackling these inner city and Zango uh, problems. The private sector can play a, a key partner or a key role. How do you intend to draw the balance between the public and the private sector participation? Well, you are damn right. And um, fortunately, the former minister um, already has established some relationship with um, various NGOs and private sector people. Um, for example, on Eid Day, um, the ministry was able to supply or to give um, what we call salamit um, to about 200 families across the Zongo communities in Accra. Mustafa, we are very good friends. I'm I never got I didn't, I didn't any, give, anything. I, I told you off camera, ah. I'll bring you your meat. So don't no, tell the world that Ghana I didn't bring know, it. You know, you didn't bring it. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> so again, it is the, the, the Qatari Charity Fund is, is helping us with about 19 boreholes in in um, Zongo communities um, across. Mm. Um, there is a project called the Garrett Project. Um, it's a World Bank um, project that is also geared towards improvement um, of, of, of the social so situation. Of, so people, all of these do things. Do they decide on what to do? No, we 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 appeal to them, mm. you know, and, yeah, and so, tell so them. So, what exactly are business people being called upon to to do in the inner cities? Well, I don't know about business people because, after business people, if you say somebody is a business fellow, which will mean that 
profit is his or her motivation for doing what he does. So what you can ask, for example, if in a community, for example, there is no, um, there are no toilet facilities in the community, for example, of course, we will be open to a situation where a businessman will come and say, okay, we'll build a toilet um, in that community, a, a public place of convenience, and then people, and then I'll charge a small fee for the community to use, and then I can make my money as a business. I believe those kinds of situations are acceptable, but that one is not my duty as minister to, if you want, design business models for people. Business people can approach us and say, look, I have found this need in this community. This is how I hope to answer the need, but the purpose is that I'm going to make profit. And then we can have a consultation with the community elders and leaders and so on. And then we allow the business fellow to go in and, and answer that need. But, but have we had such discussions? Um, not yet. Somebody has spoken to me, while we haven't sat down concrete, somebody has spoken to me on phone about um, designing an insurance package for Zongo communities, which answers the Islamic rule on on finance. You know, Islam has unique has an a unique economic system. I see. Oh yeah, that that um, for example, abhors profit and uh, interest actually, um, and and so on. So if you are going to do um, insurance, there's something called Islamic insurance. So you have to design an Islamic insurance system that would encourage or allow Muslims to participate in. Somebody says he's designed, but he hasn't come to, to, to sit with us yet. When, when we get that, we would be able to see how we get to help. Because of course, insurance is important, but if it doesn't answer to people's um, beliefs, they wouldn't patronize. We'll be right back. When you dream are you searching for something new in education for your child? Look no further. Alpha White Park Academy is here. Imagine an institution with a mission to facilitate the holistic development of every child enrolled. Imagine a school that provides excellent teaching, grounded in godly character, without any form of discrimination. Imagine an academy with a well-equipped computer lab and a library stocked with relevant books. Your imaginations are within reach with Alpha White Park Academy. At Alpha White Park Academy, a multi-skilled and Montessori approach is incorporated into our scheme for your child and infant school. We combine Ghana education service and other globally relevant curricula for your child in primary and junior high levels to have the best of educational experience. Our staff are highly qualified and well motivated to care for your child's every need. Security is provided to ensure safety of your child. Locate Alpha White Park Academy at number AE 401-10. Aquile Kaswa, behind the Living God and close to the Credit Union Training Center. Digital address code is CX044-3030. Call us on 0502-261-944 or 0544-188-045. Rush now to Alpha White Pack Academy and enroll your child. Alpha White Pack Academy, education makes. When you dream, dream big. Welcome back to The Hard Truth, Dr. Mustafa uh, Abdul Hamid, uh, Minister for Inner City and Zango Development is still here. So, your ministry is mandated to oversee the development of two different areas. One, Zongo uh, uh, communities, the other, inner city communities. However, in public discourse and uh, the ministry's own public engagement, it would seem that the ministry is only focusing on Zongos. I mean, so... How can you explain and why is this the case? Um, I don't know why that is the case, but if you would note, since I became minister, I have tried to create the balance, mm. which is why I have gone among the first communities that I have visited was the inner cities of Choco, Kolegono, all of those other areas mm. in Accra that are inner cities that are not classified as Zongo. And in speaking to these people, I assured them that I was really not going to prioritize 
exactly. Zongo communities over them. So this That's is just Choko in Accra and other areas. Yeah. What of Kumasi? What of all of um, them? Yeah. Ape Usika, I have. I. I I'm Where a product of university. Ape Usika is in is in the middle of the University of Cape Coast. I see. It's an inner city that sits inside the University of Cape Coast. So you have Ape Usika, Amamoma, Kwapro in the central region mm -hmm. and so on. As I said, there are many in all of our regions, some that I may not know about, which is why we have commissioned the work that is going around in the country now to f identify all these inner cities and bring them to our attention but so that they so, will So hold on. Earlier, you mentioned the Zongo communities being a thousand over. The, yeah, just Zongo just, alone, just, yeah. no, so not inner have, cities. Right. So do we have a data for the inner cities? No, that one is not known. So it's not a priority to you, when you, even when you started? No, 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 no. You see, because Zongo communities, are, Afro Zongo communities, they are known. And and because there are no, uh, no, Zongo... cities are known I'm coming, to I'm Chokor, coming, I'm coming. Jamestown. Yes, because yeah. those are prominent ones. I am. I, you, you, you heard Ape Usika for the first time mm -hmm, right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I also know Ape Usika, Kwapro, and Amamoma because I was at the University of Cape Coast mm -hmm. for several years. Because I haven't lived in Western region, Apart from Kwesimintim Zongo and, and so on, I will not be able to reel off my head names of inner cities. So that one has to be done by proper research and data, without a doubt. But as for Zongos, everybody knows about Zongo chiefs who can give you where okay, the Zongo so communities you are. Not, so, so you're a minister for, for, for these two, so yes. Zongo and inner cities. Yes. So how are you going to make sure, so you talked about having the data for Zongo. Now there is the inner city bit. So are you going to work on these two at the same time? Or just let me start to Yes, after the Zongos, it's even the number that I'm just telling you. But regarding their, their demographics, their needs, and, and social problems and so on, all of that will be answered by the data collectively. The inner cities and Zongo data. So will the be data all is addressing both. Oh, oh of course. Okay. Without One of the objectives of your ministry again is to upgrade existing slums and prevent the you know, occurrence of new ones. How far has the ministry gone in implementation of these objectives? Um, right now, to, there's a program that the ministry and the Ministry of Works and Housing um, is doing as a comprehensive program under the Ministry of Work and, mm -hmm. Works and Housing for, for doing these things. Um, we haven't had the first formal meeting yet. As I said, this is my second week here. So there are many things that in the course of the weeks um, I would be attending to. One of them will be... This is your third week, actually. Well, the third. Yeah. Okay. So that's in the course of the weeks um, we will be answering to. And one of them will be a major meeting with the Ministry of Works and Housing mm. on, on their overall plan. Um, for these areas and how we also lock into their plan. So in upgrading the existing slums, are we likely to see some evictions and resettlements? No, the Minister for Works and Housing yesterday, when I had a conversation with him um, when we went to Chebizongo, told me that the plan is not for us to demolish houses. The plan is for us to find, you know, lands or spaces adjacent or closer to these places and develop them, and then people can move in before we perhaps use these ones for other things. But you are not going to evict people. For example, if you decided that you were going to um, redesign, uh, say, Nima, mm -hmm. you are not going to say that people of Nima should move and go and live in Asam, Amasamai, or in Sawam. So, you, no, they are going to continue to live there whilst we do. Um, the redevelopment. But how would you do it? It will be there. So which space? I mean, how are you going to do that? Well, there, 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 there would definitely be Some spaces. Yeah, that 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 you can you can do. But we the the plan is to be able to do it in such a way that there are no major, uh, if you want, demolitions and movements and so on. Abdul, the main challenge with the inner city and Zongo dwellers is that most do not have the formal rights to remain on the land they occupy. This means that they have no incentives to develop the land and you know for future use. So what, what plans again exist to assist these dwellers to have you know formal title to these properties? Well, I'm not so sure that um, all of the inner city dwellers and Zongo community people do not have 
land. Um, whilst at the same time, I don't want to refute your point in its totality. Mm. So, but whatever it is, um, these are people who have lived in these communities for generations. And because they have lived in these communities for generations, I mean, willy-nilly, um, they own them. For example, if you take Nima, um, um, the original Alaji Futa who founded Nima, I believe, was giving proper title to the place by the landowners and, and so on. So it's not something that you can say that uh, people just came into those lands. I mean, the, the lands are owned by, if you want, the indigenous inhabitants of the place, and they gave them to these people um, with, with title. So most of them should have title to it. I don't think that that point is wholly correct. So if we were sitting here a year from now celebrating, you know, what a great year it's been for you in your role, what would you have achieved a year from now? Um, because I have said that my priority is education number one, education number two, and education number three. If we were to come back here one year um, of my stay in the ministry um, to assess me, I would want us to be talking in quantifiable terms about the number of young people that I believe I have put through school who hitherto would not have had an opportunity for education. How many um, school buildings that we have rehabilitated and how many spaces in classrooms in this community we have to, that has allowed people to get back to those classrooms. How many perhaps people that we've given a vocation a training tool that allows them to earn decent living and so on. Those are the measurables that I would want. As for, I mean, recreational facilities, alleyways, and so on, I believe that when we come to that point, we would have a lot to say about those. But my priority would be on the human development. But you ask this, this lady will kill me. Someone asked that I ask this on her behalf. She said, um, of course, yeah, we had the, the reshuffle, going back again to the reshuffle thing. I mean, it just came to mind. Uh, and she, she was a bit bitter, and she was like, you know, someone as brainy as you are should have been given something else. So we are sure some Ghanaians who think that Mustafa has been underutilized and, and should have been put somewhere else and, the, you know, there's done more than the, the Zango development, the ministry. What would you tell them? Well, yes, I've had um, such calls, and even if you, you have, want, yes, mm. and and if you want complaints of people who believe that um, they love me and they like me and they sympathize with me and uh, they are upset <laughs> with the president. Mm -hmm. No, this person is not even an MPP person. She's just really? a regular. Yeah, she's just a Ghanaian. Oh, okay. She's not a member of the party. Yeah, but so I want to assure her and all of the other people who are complaining and saying that I am being one, uh, they've used several words. First, they've used demotion. Uh, two, they've used underutilized, and so on. That all of them are not correct. First of all, there's no demotion. All ministers are equal. We all sit in the same cabinet, around the same cabinet table you and make the that. same contribution. So nothing is happening. I'm not out of that cabinet. I am inside the cabinet, just as the minister for inner cities, uh, Alaji Boniface, was in there. I'm just basically moving so, from one so side of the room to the other. How long do you intend to stay there? How long do you think you stay there? I would be excited if the president were to leave me till the election in 2020, quite frankly. I would be excited if he didn't do another shuffle and move me if he would allow me to run till 2020 inside this ministry i believe that i'll be able to contribute a lot um, to the welfare of my people by the way i i remember something that i think i should chip in mm. talking about the human development right and so on um i think i said earlier on that we had recruited thirty thousand arabic, arabic teachers. teachers i think it's three thousand that correction 3, ought to be made three thousand mm. because of the figure three <laughs> I, mm. I tended to say but it's 3,000. So when I stay here, I believe that I'll be able to help my people um, better up to 2020. That is my prayer. Um, I don't know whether the president will hear this prayer. <laughs> and, and then, and, and, um, 
Are you scared of the people, you know, going back to your position? Are you, do you think each the names that are coming up, you know, people who want to be flag bearers of the NDC, are you scared of the names coming up? Do you think they are like a huge competition to your party? No, none of them. Not one. Not even President Mahama, former President Mahama. That's the easier of them all. The easier to beat, quite frankly. Easier. We will be very excited if he was the candidate. And I, it looks like he's going to be so... Quite frankly, it's not going to make us complacent, but at least it's going to give us the confidence that we have a second term. Thank you so much for talking to the heart and truth. Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, Minister for Inner City and uh, Zango Development, has been our guest. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. If you're watching the hard truth, we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, Dawa Industrial City, Pulse Fitness Gym, and now for White Park Academy. Catch a program tomorrow morning. I said 9 to 10 a.m. My name is Nana Akrisi Akunila Santi Samuels. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.